It's a sentence that's got pro-Remainers in the UK up in arms. Jeremy Corbyn, in a speech uh, in the uh, toss-up Cambridgeshire constituency of Peterborough later in the day, due to state, quote, Labour is not wedded to freedom of movement for EU citizens as a point of principle. Earlier in an interview with the BBC, the Labour leader qualified the statement hailing the contribution of EU citizens who work in Britain. But ahead of Brexit negotiations due to begin in April, he adds that, quote, Labour supports fair rules and reasonably managed migration from the continent. Let's get the reaction of Labour MP Stephen Kinnock, who represents the South Wales constituency of Aberavon. Thank you for speaking with us here on France 24. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Do, do you agree with your party leader that, uh, well, as a point of principle, the free movement of people is something that uh, they're not particularly wedded to inside the Labour Party? Uh, I do agree, because I think that the purpose of the Labour Party is to regulate and shape markets for the common good. And uh, a big element of that, of course, is the regulation and shaping of the labour market. And uh, having a fair and balanced migration system is a very important aspect of that regulation. So I actually think it's absolutely in line with Labour's values and aims as a social democratic party uh, to have uh, proper regulation of our labour markets. Uh, and that does include uh, dealing with uh, migration. Over the weekend, I wrote an article with one of my colleagues, Emma Reynolds, where I argued for a two-tier uh, migration, labour migration scheme, whereby EU workers uh, who are highly skilled with a high um, uh, and relatively high salary threshold would m have completely unlimited freedom of movement, as is currently the case. And then low-skilled and semi-skilled workers should be uh, based on quotas, sector-by-sector sector quotas, which are set by government and industry and trade unions. I think that that would produce a fair and balanced migration system. And what we fundamentally have to do is rebuild confidence in the system. Those of us who know and believe that migration offers huge benefits to the United Kingdom, uh, how, uh, the core question for us is, how are we going to rebuild public confidence in the system? So is this, in effect, saying goodbye to access of the common market? Because you know that uh, many countries on the continent, Germany and France among them, are not going to accept it if Britain cherry picks among the, 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 the pillars of uh, free movement, free movement of labor being one of them. No, I, I think that if we offer a preferential labor migration scheme, which gives clearly better access to EU workers to the United Kingdom than it does to non-EU workers. Uh, in return for that, I think we can negotiate preferential access to the single market. I think that full membership of the single market is not going to be possible because the British people voted to leave the European Union on the 23rd of June. That is a, a decision that I regret. I campaign passionately for us to remain inside the European Union, uh, but we are where we are. I, I think what we have to fight for now is the best possible access, unfettered access, to the single market. Well, again we this week, uh, Angela Merkel said you wouldn't be able to pick and choose. Theresa May on Sunday saying Britain won't be able to keep, quote, bits of EU membership. Well, I think that we have to argue for that. I mean, I, the, the Labour Party's position should be that we need to get the softest possible Brexit, but we must also res respect the desire for control over uh, uh, movement of labour, which was expressed on the 23rd of June, but also because it's in line with our Labour Party values. Uh, so I think that we've got to, uh, you know, with this negotiation, it's going to be complex. We've got a number of things that we have to achieve, but I think we can achieve uh, a, a better migration system and a mutually beneficial trading relationship with the European Union. That's what we've got to set out to achieve. I, I lived and worked for many years in Brussels, and I learned that you have to offer a win-win uh, deal. And I, I think win-win uh, in this case is preferential access for EU workers combined with the best possible access to the single market. Stephen Kiddick, how do you explain uh, last week's uh, uh, big storm with uh, the ambassador to the EU uh, quitting early? 
Well, I think that this reflects a very worrying tendency in Theresa May's number 10 Downing Street, which is a tendency towards control freakery. And she is not empowering her civil servants and her diplomats to do the job that they need to do. She's not sharing information. She seems to have a shambolic approach to Brexit. You've got people like Boris Johnson careering around like bulls in a china shop. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, Ivan Rogers, who's a very skillful and experienced diplomat, my goodness, we need his diplomatic skills now when you've got the likes of Boris Johnson as your foreign secretary putting his foot in it all over the place, uh, has gone because he just found the um, shambolic nature of uh, the Brexit process uh, unacceptable. Uh, it is very worrying. Um, we've got to enable our civil servants to do uh, their job. Uh, and it's time now for uh, the uh, Mr. Uh, Sir Ivan's uh, replacement to be empowered to do his job properly. One final question. Uh, you mentioned at the outset how you agree with Jeremy Corbyn on the uh, issue of not being wedded to freedom of movement. Do you think Corbyn is, I know you've had your differences with him, do you think he's now striking the right tone ahead of these Brexit negotiations? I'm very pleased that uh, Jeremy has moved a long way since, uh, I mean, if you look back at our party conference back in September, where he or one of his spokespeople briefed that they had no problem with the status quo and and, and felt that there was no issue here. They've, he's clearly moved a long way. There's a growing body of opinion in the Labour Party uh, that we have to accept that the status quo is neither acceptable or desirable. Uh, and we've got to start building alliances across uh, the European Union to put that argument forward. And I think Jeremy has moved uh, quite a long way today. The, the, what's very important now is that he doesn't send mixed messages. He needs to be very clear about not just the principle, but also how we put that principle into policy practice. And I hope that he will look very carefully at the two-tier immigration system that uh, I proposed with Emma Reynolds over the weekend. I hope he'll give it serious uh, consideration. And of course, my telephone is always open should he wish to call me and chat about it. All right, uh, Labour MP Stephen Kinnock, many thanks for speaking with us on France 24. Thank you very much.